Okay, so this should be all review. Okay, so addition and subtraction of radicals. Okay, so uh, because it's review, we are going to come up with a rule to add or subtract radicals. Does anyone remember when you add subtract radicals? What everything? Yeah, no, you got to get everything out of the house. Right? After you get everything out of the house, how do you know if you can add them or subtract them? Inside the house is the same. What do we call the thing inside the house? Radicand. So the radicands must be the same. So they have to have the same radicands. What else must be the same? Good. You need to have the same index as well. Okay. So you can have three, you know, to the five of A plus eight five of A. You can add those and it will be eleven fifth root A. Okay. That's the entire rule there. And of course you can use the same rule for subtraction. Okay. So let's just kind of uh, shake shake the cobwebs loose and just do a uh, or one example here. Now right away you look at these and go well the same index yeah okay they're both squares but do not have the same radicands. But it's the same radicand after you simplify. Now remember what simplify means. It means everything outside the house you possibly can. Now that game that we're playing every day, that's how good you got to be when you are on your exam. You won't get through the exam if you see, you know, square root 72 and you don't even know what square root is in 72. Okay? You got to know 36 is in there. If you know 36 is in there, that is a quick question. And then just take 72 divided by 36. Okay, 2. Good. 36 times 2, and then I'll take it out. Okay? So I want to be want you to be very deliberate when you're going through this, that I'd like you to do the steps. Now remember, I'm the guy that's walking around all the time, looking at your notes or your quizzes, and the guy that's marking your exams. I know the mistakes you guys make. I'm not doing this for me. Okay, I already know how to do these. You would hope I do, right? I'm the guy teaching you. So don't skip these steps, especially those of you that are getting these wrong. Because I can tell you why you're getting them wrong. You're messing up the little things. The little things kill you in math. Okay? Now, is there a perfect square in 12? What is it? Okay. So I'm always going to get in the habit of taking the step and multiplying what two things multiply. And guess what this one, the first number is always my perfect square. The second number is what you need to multiply to get the number. Okay? And I know that sometimes you've been taught to go, well, go square root 4 times square root 3. Um, I wouldn't do this because you get too many square roots going. Let's keep everything inside the house and just always be under the knowledge that we gotta, we're going to kick things out of the house. So I'm not going to do any more math on that step. I'm going to do the 6. Now, is there a perfect square in 48? 16. Okay, and it's 16 times 3. Now, again, if you don't know your perfect squares, what do you do? Like, how do you go for this? I don't know how myself to do it if you don't know your perfect squares. So, this game is to obviously help you guys that if I get everybody knowing all the perfect squares, cu cubes, and to the fourth on that exam, you're going to do a lot better, you're going to be a lot faster, and when you're faster, you get to check your test over. Okay? So then you're going to catch mistakes. Now, the next thing I do is with that step, 
and I'm not actually skipping a step, I'm doing a step within, is I do this. I put a little arrow here. Now, what happens to 4 when it gets kicked out of the house? Well, not it. It turns into a 2. So I put that there. And the 16 comes out to become a 4. Okay? So now i got 5 times 2 is 10 root 3. And you see how it's so easy to, to see that. Now, you may be going, you know what? I like skipping steps, the whole thing. The bad part about that is when you come back to check it over, you have nothing to check over. So, because you skip steps at the beginning, it costs you twice. You probably made a mistake, and now you can't even check it over. Okay? And now, just... Just trust me for this exam. For, for those people that are just against doing steps, okay, just trust me. Okay? Go through the steps. The next one is 6 times 4 is 24 root 3. Like it's so easy for you to even follow my work if you see the steps, right? And then I'm going to do just a simple 10 plus. 24 is 34 root 3. Now, that's not 34 root 6. That's not 34 root 9. Because I'm not multiplying them. I'm just adding. And when I add, the radicands do not change. Now, that's the kind of stuff you put on a study sheet. Remember, just add the numbers in front. Don't multiply the radicands. See, in four months from now, you're going to come and say, oh, yeah, I didn't. You know, if I give a practice test, you know, before the, the test, and you put 34 root 6 on your unit exam, because bet you 34 root 6 is waiting for you there. I don't want you to be going, oh, crap, 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 crap. I can't remember. You add them. Do you not add them? That means you're not ready for your exam. If there is that that bit of uh, unknowing or doubt in your mind. Okay. Um, again, I just want to give you as much time to work as possible. So let's go to B. Now, it doesn't get much uglier than this. Okay? So... If you did B 10 times, you'd get really good at these. And what would you get good at? You'd get good at doing the steps. You would get good at thinking about your perfect squares. And you'd be getting good at there's fractions. I mean, there's everything in there. Everything is thrown in this question. Now, what you first want to do is you want to work with getting stuff out, the, out of the house. Okay? Simplifying. Do that first. Now, is there, or, now this is all cubes, right? So now where are we at, right? Hopefully your second column of your page that you have written down. So we're not in the squares, we're in the cubes. So what's a cube in 64? No. Yes, there is. There is an 8. 27 is not in there. That's 54, yeah. Eight's in there, but there's a bigger one. No, there's no cube root of 16, is there? Sixty-four. What's a cube root of sixty-four? This messes with the your guys' head so much because you're like like what? You just put a four? I'm like, well, what's the... Like, look at my date. Four squared plus the square root of one. Like, what's the square root of one? Just one, right? Like, you can write it underneath. So this messes with you guys. You're like, well, what do I leave inside? Nothing. You got everybody out. If you get everybody, everybody out of the house, the house is gone. Okay? Some of you guys still aren't with me, are you? You see what I did? Square root of... And we'll, and then what, what can we do with four eights? 
that's going to go down to one half. But I won't do that right now. I'll, okay. So that one is so easy that most students wouldn't get it. Right? I don't know how many students come up and I, sh I show them and they go, oh, well, that's it? That's all I do? I go, yeah, that's all I do. Okay, now this one, is there a perfect cubed of, is 375 a perfect cube? No. But, is there one in there? Times what? Times 3, okay? And I'm not getting, uh, I'm doing two steps here, okay? I'm just going to now cruise along to the next one. Now, I got 2. Is there a perfect cube in 54? 27 times 2. Now, if you don't know your perfect cubes, huh? Like, what, what are you going to do? Okay, and then there's a 3 that's just there, okay? In the last class, I forgot to put the three, and everybody was pretty messed up for a little bit until someone was like brave enough to say, "What happened to the three? Like, oh, sorry, put the three down. Okay. Now the next one minus five cube root. Is there a perfect cube in twenty-four? Eight times three over two. Okay. Now that's why I'm trying to tell you: if you did this question over and over again, you'd get okay. In step one. Find perfect cubes inside the house. That's all you do in step one. Right? Now remember, that first one messed us up because it was so easy and so awesome. Right? I was able to take it out. But now, we're going to take this 125 out and it's going to... So I'm going to write this. This is 4 eighths plus. Now, I can even make this one half. Let's, let's be crazy. Okay? It's one of those days. Now, 125 comes out to be what? 5. Remember that. So I put it there. Now I'll do this step. What's 2 times 5? So this is 10 cube root 3. Does that make sense? Okay, the next one. The 27 is coming out to become a 3. Okay. So minus 2 times 3 is 6 cube root 2 all over 3. Minus. Now the 8 is going to come out and become a 2. So 5 times 2 is 10 cube root 3 all over 2. Okay, now this one was kind of nice to us because... There's a couple things that go on here. I can divide those two. Okay? Because that is a 6 cube root 3, or cube root 2 all over 3. So this can come down to be 1 half. Or sorry, 2. What am I talking about? So this would be 2 root 2. Okay? I'm just going to actually... Can't do anything with that one. So I can simplify that one. My, and then... The 10 over 2 becomes, I forgot my cube root then, 5 cube root 3. Okay, no one's really giving me dirty looks right now, so it must make sense. Right? Now, am I done? No. These two, they can play together, right? They can't play with anybody else, though, because they do not have the same radicands. So that would be 1 half plus... Plus what? What would it be? 5, right? Because 10 minus 5. So that would be 5 cube root 3 minus 2 cube root 2. Now you're not fluking that one off. Okay? And I'll tell you, like if you're honestly sitting there, I want to get better at these, do this question 10 times. And by the 10th time, and I hope you're not looking at number 9 to do 10. 
or number one. You're just doing it every time. You're looking at the question, doing it, doing it, doing it. And, and uh, by the end, you'll be fast. You'll be thinking of all the steps. Step one, get everything out of the house. Step two, or no, sorry, step one would be find perfect cubes in the house. Step two, get the perfect cubes out of the house. Step three, get, you know, I kind of did a simplifying step there. You should do that too, but the next obvious step most times will be get those together that are together. Okay? Now you guys did these last year, right? So you sort of remember this stuff? Hmm? Yeah? No? Okay. Now, this one says find the length of X. Now, does everybody see that this length here would be the same thing as this length here? Right? Does that make sense? Okay. So, how can I find X? Well, I know this length. Right? So, that's this. And that's this. So, if I took the blue length and subtract it from the red length, would I get X? Yes. Okay. So, the blue length is 8 root 2 plus 2 root 12 minus 5 root 27 minus 4 root 18. Is that correct? Does that make sense? Should I minus them? Yeah, I should minus them. Or should I plus them? No. So if I continue, should I get this right? Some people are going, okay, this is a setup. I know it's a setup. Don't answer. Yeah? Yeah. If you don't subtract the entire side, you will get these wrong. Okay? So if this is something you should put on a study sheet, um, just put, and you know what, if you guys could do me the favor when I'm marking your exam, and if you forget the brackets, can you just put on the side, Ms. Trimble, I forgot my brackets, so this one will be wrong. Okay, can you just put that for me? Then I don't have to go through and mark the whole thing, right? Okay, so on every exam they forget the brackets, just put, Ms. Trimble, don't worry about marking this. I forgot my bracket, so it'll be wrong. Okay, can you do that for me? Okay. Either that or put the brackets, one of the two. But if you're going to purposely forget the brackets, help me out on the marking, okay? Now, let's kind of, so this would be 8 root 2 plus 2 root 12 minus 5 root 27 plus 4 root 18. Now, I know what some of you are saying. You use a whole step to get, like, rid of brackets. Uh, yeah, okay, because this is the greatest error in mathematics by far. That negative does not get distributed properly to the brackets. Okay? So it kind of deserves a step since it is the biggest mistake in mathematics. Now, what should I do? Not yet. Find perfect squares in the house first. We'll take it out next step. Okay? So, how about this one? 8 root 2. Any perfect squares in there? This thing on. Is there any perfect squares in there? No. How about 12? Any perfect squares in there? So, 4 times 3. Minus 5. Any perfect squares? Nine. You remember nine? Nine's a person too. And 18? Okay, what do you think of that step? Did I do everything right? Okay, now... Even though I am, I'm doing another step, I'm going to use a step above to do it. Okay, so this is 8 root 2. Can't do anything there. This is coming out to become a 2. Now, 
bad things happen when you guys actually don't write this step out, right? Because I have fours coming out to become twos. Yeah, that's good. Sometimes they're coming out as fours. I'm like, huh? Like, I see eight there, and I'm like, obviously you brought it as a four, right? I think if you take the time to actually bring it out and then multiply it. So two times two is four, root three. This nine comes out to become a three. So this would be minus 15, root three. This nine comes out to become a three. So four times three is 12, root two. Okay. So, and when you do like terms, I don't know, whatever you got to do, but maybe you'll put circles around all the root twos. Okay, those guys got to get together. And maybe I'll put like, I don't know, rectangles around all my root threes. So all my, the circles got to get together and the rectangles got together. So what do I got for circles? I would have 20 root two. Okay, and rectangles, I would have 11 root 3. So you can cross those out. Did those, did those. I'm good. Okay, now, to be honest with you, that's going to be the answer I'm looking for. They did in B say, what would be the decimal to the nearest tenth? Well, if the question just asked me for that in the first place, I would have put this into my calculator. And just got it right so I wouldn't have went through all this work if they didn't want exact this is exact value okay to do it in now you know what I do I put in that I'm checking over right my, I'm second time through my test so I put this in and then I would put this in and both times I will get 9.2 Okay, so that's the way I'm going to check it. Okay, now again, make sure everything's simplified and you're going to be fine. So you see how important it is? You know your perfect squares and your cubes. Now, I don't, like I was pretty fair about the perfect cubes and to the fourth. Those will get you through 99% of the questions, right? But all your squares, you should even know up to 169, right? 13 times 13 is 169. Like, knowing those does make your life easier. Do you see how when we were doing this part here, the 27, if you don't recognize there's a 9 in there, you'll get this question wrong. So, right, you got to be thinking like that. The 4, the 9, right? The 16, the 25s, the 36s. Those have to be things you just got to know automatic, okay? So, 6 to 13, uh, but you can omit, or I'll tell this first. So you can uh, do 1, 2, and 3, the A, C, E, G, and you can omit 4, 5A, 6A, 12, and 13. So 1, 2, 3, A, C, E, G, dot, 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 right? There's a, every odd letter. And omit 4, 5a, 6a, 12, and 13. Okay? So you guys have lots of time. Almost too much time. Um, so everybody should be able to get her done in class. And hopefully as you're going through this, you are taking the time to learn your perfect squares. And after a while, you'll start to go. They keep using the same ones over and over again. That probably means you know your perfect squares and your cubes and your fourth roots.